everyone, welcome to this crash course electronics and programming um, video. This one is dealing with the PCF8574 IO expansion board. So this board, uh, its, its purpose is to give you more pins on the Arduino. Uh, so more inputs or more and or more outputs. So the uh, Elegoo car um, uses up most of the pins on the Arduino. Uh, you're pretty much left with uh, A0, A1, A2, A3, and maybe you can reuse the LED pin, which I think is 13. So uh, by adding this board, you get eight more pins, so eight more inputs or outputs. Uh, however, it does cost you two pins to plug this in. Uh, it works on a two-wire interface that is called the I squared C um, interface. And so it needs a data and a clock pin and then power and ground. Okay, so you will sacrifice those two pins, which I believe are currently used in with your the built-in ultrasonic sensor, so the one that comes with the Elegoo. So you're going to have, if you still want to use the ultrasonic sensor, you're going to have to move that um, ultrasonic sensor to different pins in order to use this because there are only two pins that you can use the I squared C bus on and I believe those are A4 and A5 and you don't have a choice so if you want to use this board you have to use those two pins and no other pins. A quick note on this little block of, of jumpers. Um, you can have a lot of devices on one I squared C bus, so the two pins off the Arduino can actually be used for multiple devices. It's not the case for us because this is the only I squared C device we have. But if you had multiple of either this one um, or another device that has the same address by default, you can move these jumpers over to get access to essentially seven other uh, addresses or, or a total of seven addresses. Um, so we don't do that. So leave them to the right in the right hand position. Otherwise, you won't be able to talk to it unless you change the address. So for our sake, leave them on the right, and your address is actually going to be hexadecimal 20. So 20 hexadecimal. Uh, you can even see you can daisy chain these things. That's why there's a, a kind of an input header here and an output header there. But we only have one. All right. So um, as I said, this course is pro this this video is probably going to cover the hardest piece of electronic. It's, this is not straightforward to use. Uh, so I would try as much as you can to um, take advantage of the pins that are free on the Arduino. And then if you do need more, then uh, you can come and get six more IOs by using this board. So let's have a look at what it is because, so I set up it this way. Um, I couldn't use my robot because I don't have this on, on my robot. So I just used an Arduino I had at home on a breadboard um, and then put in an LED on port zero, or pin zero, sorry, and then a switch on pin one. Okay, so I want to use a blink and LED on pin zero and I want to be able to read a switch on pin one. So let's give you some examples over there. Uh, you may also notice that um, when I am using Arduino app. I'm using the public version of Arduino app um, because I, I needed to do that to be actually be able to use the, the COM ports off the USB because I don't have the uh, wireless radio to be able to program this. So it's a little different. Uh, so there's going to be a fair amount of theory in this one. I'm going to have to pause for theory, <laughs> but let's get started and see where we go. All right. So first thing we need to do is we need to include the wire library. Um, so similar to the the serial port, which is automatically included for us, um, you'll need to connect this through some kind of serial interface. So we're going to have uh, a, a begin function, right? and we're going to send stuff rather than uh, actually just calling like a digital read or digital write. You can't do that with this. You actually have to talk to the device. Uh, so I already mentioned this, but let the, let's add the address for this, the PCF8574. It's I squared C bus address is 20. Okay. So let's get into the setup of this guy. Avoid setup. And okay. So we'll start like everything else. We'll have a serial port begin so that our serial monitor can print out characters at 115,200 bits per second. The first thing we want to print out is what we're doing. 
which is the PCF8574 IO Expander test version one. There you go. Okay. Um, the next thing we need to do is open the I squared C bus. So wire begin. And we are the master of this bus, meaning everything, um, all, the, all the transactions to that device are going to be initiated by us, the Arduino. Okay, so we don't have to specify an address here to say this is what we, who we are, because we're going to be specifying the address of who we want to talk to. So now, essentially, all you're doing with this board is sending one byte of, or sending it one byte of data, and or receiving one byte of data. Okay, so setting one byte gives you the um, ability to set an output or also to set a pin to be an input. And this is the complicated part of, of this guy. It's that, um, sorry, these pins are quasi bidirectional um, IOs. So normally in a processor, you would separately tell the um, tell the processor which pin is an input, which pin is an output. So in Arduino, we do pin mode, pin mode input, pin mode output. Well, here, because they wanted to keep the interface as simple as possible, so only writing one byte, only reading one byte, not having to tell it, go write this register or that, to keep it as simple as possible, they're quasi um, bidirectional. What that means, for an output, it's pretty simple. Use it as normal. If you want to, if you want it to go high, write a one to that pin. If you want it to go low, write a zero to that pin. Inputs are a little more complicated. Before you can use a pin as an input, you must set it to a one. So you write a one to it, and then reading that pin will work. Okay. If at any point you write a zero to that pin accidentally or on purpose, you will no longer be able to read it. So that's the important thing to keep in mind. So let's see what that could look like. Let's write a setting function. So that's the first thing we can do because we can't do anything um, without having a set function. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to get return an int because you can actually return an error code. Uh, let's do expander pins. Uh, it's going to be an unsigned uh, character. Yeah, so an unsigned character is an 8-bit value, so that's typically what we use for a byte. I'm going to call it the pin values. So all 8 pin values are going to be written in one shot. Uh, we're going to have a status. Let's write that down. Okay, so this is the, I guess I said the wire library. We need to do a begin transmission. And what that does is it targets which device we want to talk to. So if there were multiple devices, this is what would target that device to say, I want to talk to you. So now when we do a write, it knows which device we're talking to. And what we want to write is the pin values. And then we want to end the transmission like that. And the end transmission actually returns uh, the error code as mentioned, and it the error code can be, let's just say, return status. Okay, so a zero means it succeeded, and another value means some kind of error. So we're going to return the status. So you can use that, especially for a first transmission, to make sure your device is actually connected properly. So if you try to write a value, and you get something other than a zero coming back from this function, then you know your hardware is not connected correctly, your address is wrong, uh, um, power issues, and so on. Okay, so that's the, the first thing you'd want to check is that this actually works. After that, if you don't, if you can't do anything if there's an error, um, then you can, can just do the call without actually checking the return value. Um, so if you know, like, well, if, if there's an error, I don't know what else to do anyways, well, then you can ignore it. Uh, if there is something you can do, then check it and deal with it. So here, we're going to do the set expander pins, and we're going to set it to something that's that's safe. So we're going to set all the pins uh, to be inputs, so to be ones. you got to be a little careful if you actually have outputs over here, and setting them to one will make them do something, like turn a motor or something like that, um, then you might not want to set it to one. 
um, the way you set it all, to, all of them to one is by using hexadecimal FF. So now we get to the problem that we are dealing a lot with hexadecimal stuff here. Um, to save us some trouble, let's just define away the hexadecimal stuff. So if we do pound find P0, and I, I know through experience and through the data sheet that pin zero is the least significant bit in, in the byte that we send. So I know that if I want to turn uh, P0 to a high, it's going to be the last bit in the list that I want to set. Uh, P1 is going to be the next one, and that goes to the, the second bit, which ends up being a two in hexadecimal. Um, and then you can keep going up that way as you walk through the bits for eight, and then one zero, two zero, four zero, and eight zero for pins two, three, four, five, four. Come on, get off there. Five. I'll complete in my way. Six and seven. All right, so uh, we could go into a big lesson of, of how this works for, for hexadecimal numbers and, and how to. Uh, how to use them, how to do math on them, how to bit shift and so on. Um, but that's quite a lesson. So for now, let's just use the pins and know that um, we can make use of these defines in the bitwise or operator, which is a pipe like this, um, usually above your enter key, below your backspace, depending on your keyboard. If it's a multilingual one, it could be elsewhere. Um, but yeah, so we'll use these defines. So I'm just going to teach you kind of how to do them if you're interested in learning about hexadecimal, I'll leave that uh, as an exercise for, your, for, for you to do on your own. All right, so we've opened the serial port, we've opened the I squared C bus, and we've set all the pins to FF, okay? Or another way to do that um, with that pipe thing uh, is we could do a P0 or P1 or P2 and so on. So this is um, merging the OR in this case is merging all the values. So it's anything that's in this list will be set to one. Anything that's not set in this list will be set to zero. Okay, so if I want to default them all to be one, that is the equivalent. So let's do that. All right, so now let's go to the code we actually want to, want to do, which was, so starting with the output, uh, we just want to go and we want this LED to blink on and off. Let's start simple. So it's P0, who we want to be on, then off, let's say every half second we'll, we'll switch the state, and later we'll add P1 for the switch. Okay. So to do that, all we have to do is set expander pins and we need to put in P0 to turn it on. And we're gonna do a delay for 500 milliseconds. And we're gonna set expander pins to <coughs> nothing, or it won't, it won't actually take nothing. You have to give it a number, so let's just give it a zero. Now the OX means it's hexadecimal zero, but really it could also just be a decimal zero. They come out to the same. Okay, so that should be enough. Let's do a quick compile, but that should be enough to have it turn the LED on and off. Good, so let's program it. Which I could have probably saved some time and push that button first. You know what we want, oh, there you go, so we've got the light is on, off, on, off, on, off. And if I go full screen, you can see that. All right, so that's great, but if you're only gonna use one pin uh, on this thing, you might as well just not hook it up. Uh, there's really no point in using this board unless you're using three or more pins, because otherwise you could have just saved those two pins that are on the S squared C bus and just use them directly. So uh, in this case, we'll use two. So I said that for outputs, you have to set them, to add that define in here if you want it to be high and you don't add it if you want it to be low. Uh, in addition, we have to make sure that we don't 
write our inputs to a zero. And by doing this, we are actually writing P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to a zero, because their exclusion is explicitly setting them to a zero. So in order to leave um, our P1, which is our switch, as an input throughout all of these writes, we need to make sure it is there all the time. Okay, so when you're doing a set, you must always include all of your inputs and then include all of your outputs that you want high. Okay, so that's what we have here. Both these calls have P1. So now we're just going to check to make sure that that's still true. Okay, so we're just, I'm just going to program it again and make sure that we're still we're still blinking after the programming is done. Um, we're, we're still not reading the switch, but we want to make sure that we're still blinking. So it stopped the program, it's starting up again, and now it's blinking. Okay, so we, we haven't broken anything by including P1. That's That was the goal of that one. Okay, so now we actually want to read this. So every time we write to it, we'd also like to read it. So we're going to get essentially get do a get expander pins. Okay. And that's going to be, let's give it like my val the values, I guess so it's going to be a unsigned character because it's eight bits and it's going to be pin values. So let's do that. Let's initialize it to zero just in case. Shouldn't be a problem because we're going read it, to read it every time. Okay, so we're going to do a pin values get expander pins here and here. Okay, so it's the same call but we have two different blocks because we're blinking our LED on and off. So then let's go here and actually code what that is. So the return is an unsigned character because it's an 8-bit byte. And then it's get expander pins. And it takes no parameters. Okay. So how do we get this thing? So there's, again, we're going into our, our wire library in order to do that. Um, let's get a temporary variable here so we can save this and we'll default it to a zero. So now we're going to do wire request from, and we need to give the address and how many bytes we want. As I said, this, this device is all about sending one byte and receiving one byte. So that's all we need. And then we're going to wait for this until there's a, an available byte. Now in your real code, you might not want a while that blocks until something happens that may never happen. So you might actually just want to check if there's an available thing as part of the rest of your code rather than limiting it into this small loop. Um, but for, for simplicity, we'll just do that here. And we're just going to say, when we do get a character available, we're going to do the wire read. So I'm going to say, get that character. Now, since we're only expecting one character, if we only ask for one character, what should happen is you request it, it'll say, it'll read it and say, yes, there is one available, and then it'll plop that character in there and kind of everything will be happy. Um, if there are error conditions, you might need to code something more, more sophisticated. Uh, if for some reason two bytes came back, well, you would keep the last one in this particular case, because you'd say, is there a byte available? Yes, read it. Oh, there's another one, read it again, which is fine. Uh, it shouldn't happen anyways. And then finally, we return pin values. Okay, so as I said, please be careful. This is not very uh, fault tolerant code, but it should do for this example. So now we're getting those values. We're not doing anything with them. So let's actually print them out the serial port. Serial print line pin values. Let's do that here too. Okay. Now you're going to get a hexadecimal version, like, um, and actually we can, it's probably better if we print them as hex. We can do that that way. Otherwise you're going to get a binary number, which is harder to decipher, at least with, uh, with actually maybe even print them out as binary. I'm actually not sure if it supports binary. Let's see if it'll support it or not, because that would be the best. So then we don't have to think about what it means, uh, hexadecimal, and convert it to which pin is which. So the first goal will be make sure we didn't break the blinking LED, and then we'll see if we can actually get the, the switch to report anything. All right, so let's go to the monitor because we are printing something out now. 
So now it's saying, so this is binary, so that means that port 0, the one on the right, is the uh, the bits are always the smallest, so it's called the, the smallest port will be the, the least significant bit or the bit that's furthest to the right. So in this case, the number is actually um, like six zeros, one is zero. So, so they're omitting the leading zeros, and then they're telling me the, the second last bit's a one and the last bit's a zero. So the last bit is our LED. It's zero because we can't read anything from, from our LED. Um, and then the second last one is a switch status. Um, so let's look at... And the reason it's high is because there's essentially an internal pull up here. You're setting it to high, so unless you ground that pin, then it's going to read as a 1. So the logic is, is kind of similar to the normally open switch. If I go and I push on this, then that bit goes to 0. So you can see all, all the bits are 0, essentially. If I let go... It's one, push, it's zero. Okay. Um, if you wanted to reverse the behavior of your switch, you would have to just do it in your code to say that when the switch is one, it's not pressed, so act accordingly, and when it's zero, it is pressed, act accordingly. Okay. Um, so just to reiterate on that, on that printing, if you were to get a number that was like this, um, that would mean that all the port the pins are zero except pin seven. Pin seven would be high in this case. So if I had like two switches that weren't pressed, one on um, pin one, this is pin zero, and then pin two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then this would be uh, like that when neither are pressed. And you could interpret it that way. So it's just important to remember that the farthest to the right is pin zero and the furthest to the left is pin seven. All right, so that concludes the um, crash course for the IO Expander. Um, you can get a library for this if you're using the Arduino IDE uh, on a desktop computer, um, and that might simplify things. They even have some functions that let you write or read only one pin at a time. Uh, under the covers, it's still writing everything and reading everything, uh, so it's not actually buying you anything for performance, but it is a little easier to use, assuming they work. So some of them might not quite be correct or tailored to your board, uh, so be careful. Um, but yeah, so it's, a, it's not a simple one, but uh, if you really need extra pins, it's the only way to go. So thanks for listening and good luck.